Chapter 11 Now Jephthah, the Gileadite, was a mighty man of valor, and he was the son of a prostitute, and Gilead became the father of Jephthah. Gilead's wife bore him sons, and when his wife's sons grew up, they drove out Jephthah and said to him, You shall not inherit in our father's house, for you are the son of another woman. Then Jephthah fled from his brothers and lived in the land of Tob. And there were gathered vain fellows to Jephthah, and they went out with him. It happened after a while that the children of Ammon made war against Israel. It was so that when the children of Ammon made war against Israel, the elders of Gilead went to get Jephthah out of the land of Tob. And they said to Jephthah, Come and be our chief, that we may fight with the children of Ammon. Jephthah said to the elders of Gilead, Didn't you hate me, and drive me out of my father's house? And why are you come to me now when you are in distress? The elders of Gilead said to Jephthah, Therefore we are turned again to you now, that you may go with us, and fight with the children of Ammon, and you shall be our head over all the inhabitants of Gilead. Jephthah said to the elders of Gilead, If you bring me home again to fight with the children of Ammon, and the Lord deliver them before me, shall I be your head? The elders of Gilead said to Jephthah, The Lord shall be witness between us, surely according to your word we will do. Then Jephthah went with the elders of Gilead, and the people made him head and chief over them, and Jephthah spoke all his words before the Lord in Mizpah. Jephthah sent messengers to the king of the children of Ammon, saying, What have you to do with me, that you are come to me to fight against my land? The king of the children of Ammon answered to the messengers of Jephthah, Because Israel took away my land when he came up out of Egypt, from the Arnon even to the Jabbok and to the Jordan. Now therefore restore those lands again peaceably. Jephthah sent messengers again to the king of the children of Ammon, and he said to him, Thus says Jephthah, Israel didn't take away the land of Moab, nor the land of the children of Ammon, but when they came up from Egypt, and Israel went through the wilderness to the Red Sea, and came to Kadesh, then Israel sent messengers to the king of Edom, saying, Please let me pass through your land. But the king of Edom didn't listen. In the same way he sent to the king of Moab, but he would not, and Israel abode in Kadesh. Then they went through the wilderness, and went around in the land of Edom, and in the land of Moab, and came by the east side of the land of Moab, and they encamped on the other side of the Arnon. But they didn't come within the border of Moab, for the Arnon was the border of Moab. Israel sent messengers to Sihon, king of the Amorites, the king of Heshbon, and Israel said to him, Let us pass, we pray you, through your land to my place. But Shehon didn't trust Israel to pass through his border. But Shehon gathered all his people together, and encamped in Jahaz, and fought against Israel. The Lord, the God of Israel, delivered Shehon and all his people into the hand of Israel, and they struck them. So Israel possessed all the land of the Amorites, the inhabitants of that country. They possessed all the border of the Amorites, from the Arnon even to the Jabbok, and from the wilderness even to the Jordan. So now the Lord, the God of Israel, has dispossessed the Amorites from before his people Israel, and should you possess them? Won't you possess that which Chemosh your God gives you to possess? So whoever the Lord our God has dispossessed from before us, them we will possess. Now are you anything better than Balak, the son of Zippor, king of Moab? Did he ever strive against Israel, or did he ever fight against them? While Israel lived in Heshbon and its towns, and in Aroer and its towns, and all the cities that are along by the side of the Arnon, three hundred years, why didn't you recover them within that time? I therefore have not sinned against you, but you do me wrong to war against me. The Lord, the Judge, be judged this day between the children of Israel and the children of Ammon. However, the king of the children of Ammon didn't listen to the words of Jephthah which he sent him. Then the Spirit of the Lord came on Jephthah, and he passed over Gilead and Manasseh, and passed over Mizpah of Gilead, and from Mizpah of Gilead he passed over to the children of Ammon. Jephthah vowed a vow to the Lord, and said, If you will indeed deliver the children of Ammon into my hand, then it shall be, that whatever comes forth from the doors of my house to meet me, when I return in peace from the children of Ammon, it shall be the Lord's, and I will offer it up for a burnt offering. So Jephthah passed over to the children of Ammon to fight against them, 
and the Lord delivered them into his hand. He struck them from Aroer until you come to Menith, even twenty cities, and to Abel Cheramim, with a very great slaughter. So the children of Ammon were subdued before the children of Israel. Jephthah came to Mizpah his house, and behold his daughter came out to meet him with tambourines and with dances, and she was his only child. Besides her he had neither son nor daughter. It happened when he saw her that he tore his clothes and said, Alas, my daughter, you have brought me very low, and you are one of those who trouble me, for I have opened my mouth to the Lord, and I can't go back. She said to him, My father, you have opened your mouth to the Lord. Do to me according to that which has proceeded out of your mouth, because the Lord has taken vengeance for you on your enemies, even on the children of Ammon. She said to her father, Let this thing be done for me. Let me alone two months, that I may depart and go down on the mountains and bewail my virginity, I and my companions. He said, Go. He sent her away for two months, and she departed, she and her companions, and mourned her virginity on the mountains. It happened at the end of two months that she returned to her father, who did with her according to his vow which he had vowed, and she was a virgin. It was a custom in Israel that the daughters of Israel went yearly to celebrate the daughter of Jephthah, the Gileadite, four days in a year.